Hello, Michael and Joe here under my infamous flight of stairs, bringing you another episode of Building Bodovia. Uh, today I thought we'd talk a bit about the background of the country. Uh, in the previous episode I just launched the idea with a bit of an introduction, uh, telling you the snowball effect that this uh, uh, pre-series has had. Loads of creators have come in wanting to join me to create kits and crests and teams and backstories and uh, whatnot. Uh, it's been absolutely brilliant and it's been quite a ride. Uh, but today I thought I'd bring you back to the first to the summer of 2020 and then to the summer of 1991. Uh, in the summer of 2020, I came up with this idea that I wanted to do a save in a made up. Uh, made up totalitarian country uh, somewhere in the world for FM21. I know that sounds crazy, but I am a bit crazy as well. Uh, and uh, I'm going to give you the backdrop to what I've been thinking. So uh, now it's time to take you back to August 1991. Uh, leaders of the Soviet Communist Party uh, tried to take control of the country from President Mikhail Gorbachev. Uh, after two days and three civilian casualties, uh, the attempt to end the reform program collapsed and Gorbachev was reinstalled as president. Uh, and this was the beginning of the end of the Soviet Union. As the 1991 coup was quenched, the proud Soviet Union and its Communist Party fell apart. Uh, in the following days and months, Soviet republics all over started proclaiming independence one after another. Ukraine, Estonia, Georgia, uh, Belarus, uh, everyone. But as the Soviet flag was lowered from the Kremlin for the last time on December 25th, replaced by the flag of the Russian Federation, the Soviet Union had turned into Russia and 14 new republics. Uh, not everyone accepted this though. One small made up republic closed their borders in an attempt to escape reality uh, they pulled their communist blanket over their head turned their back to the world and simply went back to dreams of a communist totalitarian utopia uh, this exact place is where our adventure starts uh, and what has this got to do with football you might ask well so far not much but this is actually the backdrop of my fm21 series uh, so I welcome you to the thought process behind the birth of both a nation and a club. Uh, in this and coming episodes, uh, you'll get a chance to follow my thinking and decisions in the process of uh, creating both this new nation and also the club I'm going to play as. Uh, there are also articles on my uh, blog, michaelinofm.com. Uh, links are in the description. Uh, so welcome to the nation of... Yeah, what? Uh, let's consider, consider this, how you go about creating a new nation. Well, one way is to determine uh, what you actually want by starting to look at what you don't want. Uh, I did not want a sleeping giant. I didn't want a fixing Barcelona. I didn't want a typical Michelin UFM youth development series. No, I wanted something completely different. Uh, when the idea of this series started spinning in my head uh, during the summer months of 2020, the fictional nation of Totalitaria uh, popped up as one of the early ideas. Uh, I had an idea of the setting to be that of a totalitarian nation and the tone to be at least semi-realistic. Uh, when I closed my eyes, I saw hard-working and struggling footballers under a stern political rule, uh, a country completely oblivious to the circus that modern football has become. Uh, the name of the series, Totalitarian Football, is of course a play of words with the term Total Football, uh, while still capturing the ambiance of my series. Uh, but let's start in a completely different place than football. Let's start by looking into what totalitarianism actually is. Uh, so if you go to Wikipedia, it says that totalitarianism is a term for a political system or form of government that prohibits opposition parties, restricts individual opposition to the state and its claims, and exercising an extremely high degree of control over public and private life. It is regarded as the most extreme and complete form of authoritarianism. So, okay, that seems to fit well for me, uh, but could I possibly use an existing nation as the backdrop to my series? Uh, my first order of business was to start looking at actual totalitarian states in the world today, uh, when I started digging, I only found 
two totalitarian regimes existing in the modern world as we know it uh, and it's Eritrea and North Korea so uh, in all honesty neither of them felt like an exciting choice uh, these two are not countries uh, of football hotspots and to create a save here it would take countless of hours of tedious pre-game edit work uh, that would probably be the case for all of Asia and Africa. So Asia's out, Africa's out. Uh, and from the entire list of historical totalitarian regimes, only one stood out to me, and that was the Soviet Union. Uh, and if you've been listening from the beginning, you know that that is where we will end up. Uh, but I needed more options, so I took one step back and looked at the quote, totalitarianism is regarded as the most extreme and complete form of authoritarianism. So, what if I look into authoritarianism instead? What's the difference? Uh, it's not that big. It's still very restrictive uh, when it comes to the population. Uh, it's still uh, a high level of state control. Uh, so, I thought that this, this sounded good. Uh, not good in the sense of opposite to evil, uh, but you know what I mean. Uh, well, okay, not actually good then, but fitting my idea of what I wanted at least. Uh, the list of authoritarian regimes offered more choices. Angola, Azerbaijan, Bahrain, Belarus, China, Hungary, Turkey. The taste in my mouth as I read the list became increasingly sour. This felt too real. I wanted my series to be semi-realistic but still fun. I don't want to be constrained by too many real facts and I certainly don't want to get involved in political discussion uh, simply because I inadvertently upset anyone. Uh, now I need to turn to the list of historical authoritarian regimes and I understand that they have probably been just as unpleasant as the current ones but at least a bit of more time has passed healing wounds and giving me more artistic freedom. Uh, so after excluding African and Asian countries, I had a list of a few South American, uh, Argentina, Brazil and Chile, and a couple of more European countries to offer me a bit of inspiration. Uh, I really loved my time in Brazil with Santos and FM20, but when I saw the list of South American countries, I felt that I had done South America, I wanted something else. So South America is out of the question, that only left Europe and 10 European countries. Austria, Croatia, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Lithuania, former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, Portugal, Spain, Turkey, Yugoslavia and former Republic of Yugoslavia. Uh, and Portugal and Spain felt too good for Pauai so they were out as well and this left me with Croatia, Macedonia, Yugoslavia, so basically former Yugoslavia. So the final two contenders were Soviet Union and Yugoslavia. Uh, this could feel like two similar but yet different options, both fitting my purposes though. So when I closed my eyes I saw a stern military leader, greyish tall buildings, uh, proud but poor people and technical football. And this could certainly be the inspiration for my totalitarian. Uh, but how do I decide between them? Well, that's the beauty of fiction. I really don't have to. I need to geographically place my nation somewhere, and that's what we're going to do in the next episode. But except for that, I guess I can borrow and steal as much as I want when it comes to inspiration. Uh, so this has been a uh, brief look into my thought process uh, when I started this. Uh, and we will continue to do this for upcoming episodes. I thank you for coming on this journey with me. Until I see you next time. Bye.